Spider mites, aphids, thrips, white flies, and hornworms. Are you looking for a better way to keep these insect pests off of your tomato plants? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my four secret weapons. Welcome back to Wishwell Farms. I'm Jason, thanks for joining me. So in our greenhouses here in Ohio, there are five main insect pests that we have to deal with that get inside our greenhouses and wreak havoc on our tomato plants. And many of these insect pests are gonna be the same ones that you may have to deal with in your gardens, on your tomato plants throughout the summer months. So in this video today, I wanna to show you the four main products that we use to control these insect pests, how I mix them, and how I deliver them to the plants. So hopefully at the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding on how to control these same pests on your tomato plants and your gardens this summer and have a successful growing season. All right, first item up, conserve. And conserve has an active ingredient called spinosad. And it is just a fermentation of natural occurring organisms. This is a great product for controlling thrips. And thrips is the main insect pest we have to deal with in our greenhouses. I have a leaf sample here with thrip damage on it. I don't know how well it's going to show up. I'll try to get it close to the lens here. But you can see how there's uh, bleached out areas on this leaf. It looks like white bleached out areas. And if you look really closely, there's even little black dots within those bleached out areas. That is a surefire sign of thrip damage. You'll see the adults usually on the top of the plant leaf. And on the underside, if they've been able to run rampant long enough, see if I can zoom it, focus back in here. There on the underside of the leaf is where you'll see the little larvas and pupa stage of thrips come out onto the leaves. And you know, within 30 days, they're adults. So that's why it's necessary to spray this product every seven to 14 days to break up that life cycle of the thrip. So Conserve does a great job of controlling thrips in our greenhouses and we mix one teaspoon per gallon of water. And the way that it works is the thrips will ingest it and results in paralysis and death. But it can also work by just contact exposure as well. Next up we have Azagard with an active ingredient called Azadiractin and it's extracted from the neem tree. So many of you have probably heard of neem oil, but this is an insect growth regulator and they are repelled by the taste and the smell, but it also has uh, a growth and molting regulator uh, is the way it works on the bugs. But you can see here, if you look up close um, list, all the labels are gonna list which insects are controlled. So this is a great natural organic product. I guess it's called a biological uh, insecticide to use on your tomatoes. Next up in my arsenal is Evergreen, one of my favorites because it is so widely adaptable to so many different insect pests. Uh, the active ingredient in here is pyrethrins and pyrethrins are derived from the chrysanthemum flower, which are also known as mums. This one also works really good on thrips for us and I will also use it if we have aphids or spider mites. And the reason I use so many different items is because you don't want to build up a resistance to any one of these on the insects you're trying to kill. So let's just say I use this one every time I sprayed. It's possible that the insects could build up a resistance to it and be, it would become ineffective. So that's why I rotate around to these different products to control the thrips and aphids in our greenhouses. And one we haven't talked about yet is hornworms. That's probably the one most of you are familiar with. It's the great big green caterpillars that you'll find on the tops of your tomato plants and they will just completely wipe out a plant almost overnight. These all do a fantastic job on killing uh, spider mites, aphids, and thrips. But when it does come to hornworms, there is one other item that I like to use that I think works better than all these for hornworms and other caterpillars, and it's Dipel DF, which is just a uh, BT, which BT stands for Bucillus thuringiensis, and it's just a soil dwelling bacteria that produces a toxin to certain insects. And one of those insects that it does a really good job of toxifying is hornworms. They will basically be dead the next day. This stuff is great. It's just, it's a dry flowable. It's in powder form. That's what the DF stands for, dry flowable. And it doesn't take very much. Um, 
not even a teaspoon per gallon. Like a quarter teaspoon per gallon of water is all it takes. So it's very toxic to hornworms. Now thrips are something we have to deal with in our greenhouses the entire growing season. Uh, not so much spider mites and aphids. They tend to come later on in the growing season for us, which is July, and they like dry conditions. So when the dry summer months of July kind of kick in, that's when we start seeing possible hot spots in the greenhouses of aphids and the two-spotted spider mite. Those can definitely spread like wildfire and devastate a crop very quickly. White flies are something we don't really have to deal with in our greenhouse. I think I've had them once or twice over the last 20 years, so not too much of a big deal for us, but I know in certain areas of the country uh, they can really take over a greenhouse pretty quick. Before I move on to show you exactly how I mix these and deliver the product to the plants, I wanted to show you these three other products that I have used in the past um, that, that also work fairly well, but it takes more of them because these mainly work by suffocating the insects and smothering them. So you have to um, spray a much heavier amount of liquid onto the plant leaves to cover the insects. But in a small garden setting, these would work fantastic. Um, the Impede is just a insecticidal soap. Um, it's potassium salts of fatty acids is what it says here. But uh, it's basically just an insecticidal soap. Um, Ecotech is rosemary oil, peppermint oil, and some other ingredients. And the Tritec is just a mineral oil. So all three of these items are labeled for organic use are pesticide free and all work fairly well all right i have two different methods of spraying my plants and when my plants are small like uh, new planting and i just need to spot spray some small areas i'll just use this little uh, two gallon hand sprayer and this nozzle i like this nozzle the one i use it sprays in a cone fashion um, and it really does well at covering the plants well. So I'll often walk down the row this way, spraying the mist up into the plants underneath the leaves as much as possible because um, it seems like it works better on the pupa and larva stages if I can get the mist under the bottom sides of the, of the leaves where they reside. And it doesn't take much effort at all to get it on the top of the leaves. It's getting it underneath is the hard part. So I will fill this up with some water. And I have my conserve right here. I got, I'm gonna have two gallons of water in here, so we're gonna put two teaspoons of conserve. One, two. I'll finish getting it filled up with water. And then we'll give her a good shake and I'll show you what this uh, spray pattern looks like with this uh, little handheld sprayer. Pump up some pressure, give it a good shake so the product is mixed well. And we should be good to go. All right, you can see we have a nice fine mist. Comes out in a cone pattern. Great for getting good coverage on the bottom sides of the leaves. As you can see here, I'm just spraying the lower parts of the plants because that is where the thrips will attack the plants first. Um, later on in the season, they'll start moving their way up the plant, but usually I can get by just spraying the uh, bottom few feet of the plant. One of the best things about all these products I'm showing you here today is that they are labeled for organic use. They are all OMRI labeled, which means Organic Materials Review Institute. So they are completely pesticide and chemical free products. They're all considered biologicals. One of the other main reasons I like to keep my spray in the bottom couple feet of the plant is because we do have bumblebees in here right now doing our pollinating for us. And some of these items can be toxic to bees. So if I do have to spray the entire greenhouse from top to bottom, um, I will do it late in the evening late afternoon, early evening, while the, when the bees have uh, finished doing their work around the tops of the plants, pollinating the flowers. Now, when I need to spray multiple greenhouses, front to back, top to bottom, that little two gallon hand sprayer is not gonna cut it. So I have this uh, 25 gallon gas powered sprayer here with a 150 foot hose on it. 
that works great and it sprays at 200 psi and the, the spray wand has a couple different adjustments on it for uh, shooting a sharp stream really long distances or I can make it a very fine mist which is what you want when trying to get good coverage all around the top and the bottom of the leaf the finer the mist of spray and product on the tomato the better so I'm gonna fire this up and I'll give you a look at how it works and what it looks like Yeah, this sprayer has been phenomenal for uh, getting good coverage throughout our five greenhouses when there's an insect pest outbreak. Um, I used to have like a solo backpack sprayer, um, a motorized two cycle backpack sprayer that worked pretty good too. But uh, I think this is a little bit better. The only downside to using this for our operation is uh, pulling the 150 foot hose down the greenhouse aisle and you can spray, you know, one side or the other and then you gotta roll it all the way back up and pull it down another aisle. So that does still get a little time consuming and it's definitely one of the jobs that I don't really enjoy here on the farm. A small one quart container spray bottle like this one works great for home gardeners that just need to spray some small areas. Uh, they do a great job of spraying a fine mist and getting good coverage on the leaves. You would just need to adjust the rate to one quarter of a teaspoon for most of the products I've shown here today. Alrighty, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you learned something that you can apply to your garden tomatoes this summer. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below and I'll be sure to answer those as soon as I possibly can. Hopefully you found this video useful and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again real soon down on the farm.